new on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying Black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the Black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land. The podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Great job it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. First, a quick happy Chinooka to our friend uh, Chris Newkirk. All right, today we toast 28-year-old Dale McLaughlin of Douglas, Scotland. Now, Dale started dating his current girlfriend in September of this year. He met her on the Isle of Man which is separated from the mainland by 25 miles of choppy water. But he'd met her when he was working as a roofer there. And with COVID restrictions in place, he'd received permission to work there for four weeks. But when his time was up, he had to return home. Now, he hasn't seen her since, and COVID restrictions are still in place. But our hero, he got real, real thirsty. You see, before I continue, let me uh, preface this with an actual quote from one of Dale's family members. Quote, he's a nice lad. But thick as a brick. Back to the story. Does that uh, translate into he's a little dumb? He's an idiot. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dale, keep in mind, Dale cannot swim. And Dale has never ridden a jet ski. But that did not stop Dale from buying a jet ski and then attempting to traverse the 25 miles of choppy water. He predicted it would take him 40 minutes. He was wrong. And I know what you're thinking. No, he did not drown. He did make it. It took him four hours. And he made it. To the Isle of Man, but the journey was not done. Once he made it to dry land, he had to walk another 15 miles. Wow. The average human being, just you know, walks three miles an hour. We'll say he did that. That's another five hours. He walked, he walked on top five of miles the four hour. hours. <laughs> Considering he was going for the nay nay, there's a good chance he's walking. Five. So we'll just <laughs> yeah. say, we'll, we'll meet the happy medium, say it took four hours. So now this is eight hours into this trip. Uh, let's see. So he gets there, he finally gets to his girlfriend's house. That is good. It's amazing. He actually made it there. And then when they got there, I'm sure they had sex. But after that, they went out to a bunch of what they call various crowded nightclubs. Now, unfortunately, police started running identity checks on several patrons just to make sure they're supposed to be there. That's when they realized that he had violated protocol. He was arrested and will spend the next four weeks in jail, all in the name of some humana humana meow meow. If I couldn't swim, the idea of getting on a jet ski through choppy water choppy and going water. 25 miles Think about between the water, a channel right. yeah. to get to an island, I mean, that guy... And then walk 15 miles again. Up, uphill both ways. It's the call of booty. There is no stronger thing on this earth than the promise of sex. That'd be a great video game. What's Oh, God, yeah. Call of booty. Call of booty. <laughs> Everybody be playing. <laughs> I'm into video games again, man. <laughs> call I brought you back. Call of booty. <laughs> It's a quest <laughs> to get some ass. Right. Call them. This is their location. Exactly. If you can survive yeah. this, you get laid. I fought like 10 freaking warriors, man. You know how many dudes be playing video games oh, all yeah. of a sudden? And how good Call we would booty? be? Oh, I'm the champion. Call the booty. And you knew what you were getting when you got there? <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. I was unarmed and survived every attack. Exactly. Call the booty. <laughs> all right. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, Steve Throw Hill, can you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. 
Murph. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. All right, Justin, you understand how this here game is played? Sure, dear thrill. Fantastic. You know you have a choice of one of three stories. We have the wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guessed the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Let's go with interior decorating. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. By the way, uh, Justin, you're playing the last profile this of 2020. Good luck. Oh, wow. Keep that in mind. Here's your story. The final uh, profile of this of 2020. Prosecutors were forced to drop criminal charges against a South Florida woman who is accused of stealing five items, four of which were found inside of her vagina during a jail strip search. I cannot say her name, but her last name is Brookins. So, Miss Brookins, she beat the grand theft charge earlier this month when the victim, an Orlando businessman named Ramon Diaz, stopped cooperating with prosecutors. So what happens to the stolen items? Well, Diaz only had proof of ownership of one of them. The rest will remain in the property room of the Miami Springs Police Department until someone files a motion, blah, blah, blah. The story is, Brookins was arrested after police said they first met Diaz at Mango's, a popular nightclub in South Beach. Mango's. The two later ended up at the Clarion Suites in Miami Springs. Police uh, said that Diaz went to the bathroom, then emerged to find a Crown Royal bag gone. Inside were five items valued at $108,000. Wow. Now, Diaz confronted uh, Brooklyn as she tried to get into a cab. She beat him over the head with an, quote, unknown object. He fell over days, but he managed to grab the bag, but only one of the items was still inside. Police officers, meanwhile, found the suspect, who sports a tattoo on her left arm that reads, quote, whore, in a nearby alley. Swear to God, she has a tattoo that says whore. Uh, inside of the patrol car, she began to spit, started banging her head, stomped windows, bit a police officer. She was also charged with resisting an officer with violence, possession of cocaine, and battery. Now, the other items were not found until she was booked in the jail and underwent a strip search, where four items, which were found in her vaginal cavity, uh, were then taken to the evidence room. The question is, what did they find in her dirty bits? Was it gold bars, loose diamonds, watches, or cash? So gold bars, loose diamonds, watches, or cash? I feel like that'd be a lot of cash. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. $100,000. So that's... $108,000. Where's she going in? This was in South Florida. All right. That's right. They were meeting up at Mango's. They met at Mango's. Best I could tell, she's a prostitute. Either way, they went back to the hotel. Well, let's assume they had sex. That's not included in the story. When he went to the bathroom, he had that Crown Royal bag. All right, Justin, here's what I think. I think if uh, cash is not uh, cash is not out of the reason here, I don't believe, uh, because it's in a Crown Royal bag. I think loose diamonds is a stretch, simply because the bag's big. And I don't think you'd carry diamonds that way. It just seems like they could get out of there. I think this guy, being it's uh, South Miami, he's either got watches in there or he has cash in there. I'm going to go watches. That's a pretty flashy area. And if he had a collection and he had five of them, it's not unreasonable to think that they were about $20,000 a piece if he's rolling. I don't know. That's what I'm going to guess. I thought that's a really, really good guess there. And, and I, would, I would think that someone would have watches over diamonds or jewels like that. So, yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know what? Watches. That sounds like a like, plan. Right, it was cash, watches, diamonds. What was the other one? Gold bars. Gold bars, sorry. Ooh, I mean, they're meeting in mangoes. Yeah, mangoes, baby, you know. Seems like a diamond crowd to me. Okay. You going diamonds? I'm going with diamonds. Mango diamonds. All right. Justin, Mango. do you want to stick with the watches Mango. as your final answer? You know what? Yeah, let's go, let's go with watches. All right. We're going to find out what was up in the hoo-ha. Was it gold bars, loose diamonds, watches, or cash next? That was a tease. 
knew on Curiosity Stream. She was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Subject is interior decorating. Prosecutors have dropped charges against a woman who uh, met a guy at a club. Yeah. Mangoes, coconuts, something like that. Mangoes. South Beach. Somewhere down there. Oh, yeah. This guy feels like he's working his magic. They get a hotel room, go back to his hotel room, whatever the deal is. Either way, he had some valuables in there to the tune of $108,000 in a Crown Royal bag. Yeah. And we always say this. If you find a Crown Royal bag in someone's house, something in it, there is definitely something in it of value. Worst case scenario, you got whiskey. Right, exactly. And delicious Canadian whiskey at that. Uh. But he had something else in there, and then she took that and put it in her fanny pack. So when she was booked, what did she have up inside her? Gold bars, loose diamonds, watches, or cash? And Justin, that is the very question that we posed to you. We start with D. Ted Smith. You said diamonds. Ow. Oh, you know it. Oh, I'm sorry. Good, not good. The miles you went through this big, long theory came up with watches. And Justin, you said, man, that's good thinking. I agree. Okay. You are correct. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Good to go on the W there, Jimmy, here. I'll just assume they were Rolex. I don't know. But think about this situation. He managed to get one of them back because he grabbed the bag from her. When he goes to the police station, he can't prove that the other four are his because all they know is that they were inside of her. There's no way to verify it. But then he would not continue with the cops, probably because she was a prostitute and he didn't want to put himself in that trouble. Jesus. Or they weren't his. Mm -hmm. Well, keep in mind, she had whore tattooed on her arm. So yeah, I mean just, that he he kind of backed out of this. So, but even if they weren't his, he still claimed the one was, and they weren't giving him any grief about that. Huh. Right. So there's four more, and they're probably like, "Look, we believe you, but there needs to be a way for you to prove it because of the letter of the law. Like, there's there's no evidence of this. Just right. I don't think there's like a register. You just have that watch. Right. And she had watches in her vagina. While that's unusual, it does not guarantee that a crime had happened. Okay. Now for all TV news all the time, and it's time for TV time with Ted. And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. All right, your choices tonight, Seth Myers. Seth Myers. The Jimmies. Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Fallon. Conan. Conan. Or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it Len? And it's right there in the title. All these uh, guys have teams of talented writers who come up with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine is this an actual late night joke and from whom, or could it be a The Ted Smith original? IKEA is now selling tiny homes starting around $47,000. It sounds interesting, but I'm not sure I want to live in a house that I assembled with an Allen wrench. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Seth Myers. Fallon. So the IKEA is now selling tiny homes starting around forty-seven thousand dollars. Really tiny. Yeah, it sounds interesting, but I'm not sure if I want to live in a house I assembled with an Allen wrench. <laughs> ah, and if you saw this, there was a new study that said seventy-seven percent of adults plan on buying themselves more uh, more Christmas presents this year as a reward for getting through twenty twenty. Now, just because you're horny and need another vibrator doesn't mean it's a reward. 
Yeah. <laughs> you guys oh, buy a yourself reward? a gift? No. Oh, well, you know what I mean? Sort of. Because we're old men. This is our conversation outside. Oh, Jesus. You know, I'm talking about, uh, it's sort of God, this conversation we just had. After Christmas, because you can save money. I also started this out with my back is killing me today. I buy myself a new mattress. I'm like, hey, we're just talking about the same thing. I'm going to get us a... That is, that's the yeah. quote-unquote gift. And that's you only call it a gift because they're so goddamn expensive. It doesn't feel like a gift. It's more of a necessity. But when you get it, you're I like, know. I cannot believe I didn't buy a new mattress you know, five years ago. Trust me, I'm right there with you. I need one, too. As much time as I, I spend on it. So that my kids and my dog can be comfortable. But with that said, I'm still going to buy a couple pairs of shoes. Uh, yeah. You know what? That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. I just know it's the big purchase, you know. I, well, I am buying myself one gift, but it's going to be labeled as though it's for the kids. But it's not really. <laughs> uh, organizers of the Times Square New Year's Eve celebration have announced they're, they will not allow an audience this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Fortunately, if New Yorkers want to catch a ball drop, the Jets still have three games left. <laughs> Found. Seth Myers. Seth Myers. Organizers of New York's Times Square New Year's Eve celebration have announced that they will not allow an audience to gather due to the coronavirus pandemic. Fortunately, if New Yorkers still want to watch the ball drop, the Jets have three more games. <laughs> you think the Jets go winless this year? I don't that know is who's an on the Interesting schedule. question, right? Because Cleveland did it. Cleveland did it. Detroit did it a few years before them. And then didn't the didn't the Bucks, Tampa Bay, weren't they the only team that had done it for but a long time? They were an expansion team. I think that it was year 1976. Team. Yeah, yeah. All 77 right. somewhere. There. They got the Rams, the Browns, and the Patriots left. Yes, they go winless. I think they go winless. Yeah, that, that's not a good lineup for them. No. <laughs> Damn. College kids are actually drinking less during the pandemic. Turns out it's not that fun to do a keg stand when the people holding your legs are mom and dad. Jimmy Fallon? I'm going to say Kimmel. Fallon. College kids are actually drinking less during the pandemic. Turns out it's not that fun to do a keg stand with the, when the people holding your legs are your mom and dad. I feel like when you're in college, that's a fun age that you actually don't mind hanging out with your parents again. Because there's like those teenage years where it's just... You're trying to hide everything. Well, yeah, and it's just, it's just not cool. You know what I mean? If right, it's exactly. a Friday or Saturday night, like, you don't want to go with your parents to go eat dinner at some restaurant. You're right, man. Like, when I'm a teenager, you can go hang out at your house. But, like, if your mom came down, even to ask you questions, like, oh, God. When you get about 20 years old, like, hey, man, my mom's coming by. I don't know. It's going to drop off some food. Like, when they show up, like, come on in. Suddenly, everyone's super happy to see them. You'd be out with your friends in high school, and if dinner was at 630, and you came home at 8, you'd be like, just leave me a plate. I don't really care. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll get there That's when I get I'm there. That's what i But if you're in college, and your mom says, hey, I'm having dinner on Sunday. Uh, we're having it at 530. You want to come over? Like, I'm there at 430. <laughs> I mean, I don't know with anybody. Laundry. I'm like, starving. And, and, and teenage kids just go through a period where they just don't like their parents. It's of course. really nothing the parents have done. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of pissy. Yep. I mean, it's that age, man, and it's yeah. inevitable. There's not much you can do about it. And there's some people who will keep that up for a while, and I get that. They just don't <laughs> like their parents. But Understood. Right? But, right. I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know. It's just funny to me. Like, I have plenty of friends that have had kids that have gone through that phase, and it's like, I tell people all the time, like, I, I just think as teenagers, there's three years, nothing you can do. Yep. By the Probably. time they get to college, though, it's like cool again. They're back. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. Then your friends. Yeah. Let's go. You know what I mean? It's probably like, think of it as chain restaurants. You used to hang out at the Rainforest Cafe together. Then they didn't want to hang out with you. You know, it's like... Now, to, now you go to a bar it's like It's like for 18 years, you've been the chief of police, right? You're, you're, you're in control. You've been in charge of everything. Right. These, are, these are your people, your inmates. you got to take care of them, right? Whatever they are. They're your, they're your little criminals. Mm -hmm. And then, because you don't expect anything good out of them, and when they do do something good, you're <laughs> incredibly surprised. But for the most part, you think they're up to no good. And then, it's like you retire. And you're not the chief oh, of police not. anymore. Yeah. So from that point on, it's like you're 18. This is, this is on you, man. They got a new police <laughs> chief, and he's going to throw your ass in jail, unlike me, who will just ground you. Now and you realize I'm okay. You don't care because I don't do that job anymore. I'm, it's not that I, I, I'm not always going to be your dad. I care, but it's your problem. But you're an adult now. so. Uh, let's see. Do you want good news or bad news? Good Start news. The bad. Just oh, get it because I feel like you're going to do it anyway. I have a the 10 Hollywood icons we lost in 2020. Oh. Wow. Do we have a, sad that's, music? That's Make a, it worse. Make no. 10. No. Play the sad music so that Ted comes off as just the worst person in radio. Okay. All right. You think you can do this? Yeah. Alex Trebek, 80, died in November. Sean Connery, 90, 
Died in October. Kelly Preston, 57. Ugh. Died in July. Yeah. Uh, old Reeds, Regis Philman, 88. He died in July. Carl Reiner, 98. Died in June. Nina Riviera, 33. She, she died drowned. in July. Right. That was right. awful. Yeah, she's trying to rescue her kid. Yep. Uh, Olivia, Olivia D. Havaland. She's 104. She died in oh, July. Oh, I mean, come on. Not really, I would say, a Hollywood icon, uh, icon but obviously. I mean, Silent films. <laughs> uh, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, he died in January. Early. Kurt Douglas died in February. Then, of course, we talked about it. Uh, Chadwick Boseman that died in August. I can't believe that's the music you picked up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you trying <laughs> to pick it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they really need to. They need to do that at the Academy Awards, right? Because once they do the in memoriam, it's always a heavy song, and there's billions of names. You know, people we don't know, but actors know. They they definitely should play some more upbeat music. It sounds like you're happy they're gone, but like we're not going to bash you over the head with this. Yeah, right? I know. They always play that stuff. And then it's always like, I don't know, somebody always like, how did you leave this person out or that person? And it's, like, it's over you. We yeah. forgot. They didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot. Uh, let's see. Now, today I have a list of uh, the, the top 50 ranked net, Netflix programs of 2020. All right. So we've talked about other TV shows and this and that. Now, keep in mind, a lot of Netflix content is uh, shows that were already on networks that are on now. Okay, right, 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 right. I will also say, based on Thrill's recommendation, my buddy Joe's and Mike's, The Boys is a very, very good show. Do not watch it with it, your it's kids. On, it's on Netflix, right? No, no, no. It's, that's on Amazon Prime? Yes. I looked, so that's where I I looked for The Watchmen the other night, and I couldn't that's find it. That's on HBO. I don't have HBO. <laughs> oh, well, you'll never know. I guess I'll just have to watch it. What is it be pissed off in the first 10 minutes of an episode? I mean, Amazon Prime might have it, too, because Amazon Prime, you can buy a lot of I shows. I checked, yeah. That, I don't think shows. that. Shows. God, I don't know if I yeah. use it. Buy a bunch of S. <laughs> uh, so some of this is just like the the ones that made the top twenty. Uh, I never watched this one, frankly, because I just didn't want to watch it. But the Epstein uh, documentary, Filthy Rich, I'm right there I watched with you. it. I did not watch it for the same reason you didn't. Yeah, I was just like, ah, I'm good on that stuff. I know enough without knowing it all. I right, know I already know too much and don't want to know anymore. And people are like, you'll be shocked by this and that. Like, no, like that's the problem. It I wasn't. Be. It's like Wein or Weinstein or Stein. Like, it wasn't. These secrets were known, and people just didn't do anything right. to prosecute them. I think it's m less about him. We know enough about him. We there's probably uh, it's the tip of the iceberg on what you don't know about that guy. Sure. I think what you don't know is the extent of his associations with people that you don't know were that deep into that. Okay. I think that's yeah. the difference in it. So it's, you know. I get why people find it interesting. I'm just like, oh, I get 2020, it. it's kind of like, like, like this year I just never watched The Joker. I just was never in the mood, you know, to be like, you know what, let's watch a sad movie about a guy that snaps and starts yeah. killing people. See, sure. the problem is everyone told me, man, you need to be in the mood to watch it. And once you tell me that, like, then I will never I be say, in the mood oh, to watch I, it. See, I, it's only three or four episodes, I believe. What, I've seen? You understand why certain people who are in a position of power to speak up about anything mm -hmm. have remained quiet for, you already know why. for a year or so. Just to let that yeah. go over. Uh, I wish them well. <laughs> Floor is Lava made the list. That one, I think. Really? Was, yeah. I mean, it was. I saw a couple episodes because I have kids, and it was okay. I just, I never really got into it. But I also think, uh, you know, a lot of people like me, like hey, Flores Lava is just one of those things that a lot of people checked out. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? Yeah, it's like uh, I don't know, uh, make a tent with cushions. If they had that, it'd be like, all right, what kind of tent? They got? What <laughs> right. kind of fort to make with the cushions? Right. <laughs> uh, Miles, uh, our, our shows made the uh, uh, top fifteen. By the way, uh, the Creek Show. That was on there. <laughs> and then my show, All American. And All American got a very nice bump this year. Because everybody was home. Because remember, All American started out on the CW. can't remember the second season was on the CW as well. But it, it didn't do that hot. And then it got on Netflix and a bunch of people watched it. You were all about it. Man. Yeah. But then when you had the uh, lockdown happen, you know, back in March and April, people were just at home binging everything. So it was like, oh, this All American show is good. <laughs> Somebody the other day was asking me, they go, you know that's based off like a real guy. I was like, I've been annoyingly talking about this show for about seven months. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm up to date on it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I, that one seems, a lot of people, I got to watch that one. I haven't I'm, seen that's, that I'm on that one, too. I'm going to get on that. I, I've been laughing my ass off watching it. And my, my son is in love with this show. Oh, really? It, yeah, I mean, it's. 
it's as cheesy as you'd expect because it is just picking up the Karate Kid, but they also understand a lot of us that grew up with Karate Kid. We're adults now, so they I think they do it pretty well. All right. Uh, Unsolved Mysteries, that came back. People love that show. Umbrella Academy, a lot of people tell me to watch that. I watched Outer Banks, another good show, but definitely... That was like a, a teen, teen flick, right? Or it's like teen, a teen, teen drama, series. but the adults are involved. All right. You know? It's, a, you know, it's your classic rich versus poor, the struggle between the families and the family. Uh, Ozark, of course, a lot of people love that. Then you get in the top five, Tiger King, Queen's Gamut, The Office... And then number one, a preschool nursery rhyme franchise, Co Chameleon. I am a children's show. Spent 104 days in the top 10 more than any other program except the office. Kids are at home. I'm glad my kids are old enough that I kids don't know home. Parents I'm sh- need a half an hour. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I mean, I'm sure that's one of those things, too. You're just yeah. like, uh, hey, just go watch another episode of that, kid. That was my Paw Patrol. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. New on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. An actual headline. The dragon rips apart a man working in an under-construction Jurassic Park resort. It's actually on an island. Meanwhile, a Florida man walks home after being bitten by a shark. As for blood loss, around the court. Up the road in Tallahassee, new python-sniffing dog. It's his first snake. A uh, Florida woman beating sister with a Christmas ornament is all that she could take. And a tractor-trailer head-on collision with a snowmobile ends as expected. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, top story. We've got a New Hampshire where a man is the first in a wave of stories we're about to see. He's been charged with vehicular assault and reckless conduct after he did not clear the snow from the top of his box truck, which then came crashing down into the car behind him. It was oh, a, yeah, uh, it was it was a six inch, they said basically sheet of ice. Goodness gracious. Oh, when it Jesus. came off the back of the truck, the truck was going fifty miles an hour. Right. Right. The ice lifted off the back and basically impaled through the entire windshield oh my God. of the car behind it, broke all of the ice, fractured the guy's head, face, the whole deal. Jeez. I mean, it came through the windshield. Clear off the ice off the top and of your that, vehicles, guys. Yeah. And I know it's a box truck, and you're probably going to have to get a ladder out and all right. that stuff, but it's dangerous. Yeah. You're going to hurt people. Not only that, man, but there's nothing worse than driving down the road. You have this huge snow cloud just down there. Yes. You're like, Jesus, dude. I've been driving down the freeway right. here where we really don't get much snow, and all of a sudden a giant-ass chunk comes off somebody's exactly. car. Come on, dude. And while you're at it, secure your damn load. Absolutely. Throw a rope over that thing. I call it clinching. <laughs> in other news over in Montana a man has been arrested for sabotaging the local trail in an attempt to keep bicyclists away from the trail the man was caught hiding a board with several screws drilled through it Jeez. on the trail he's placed the board in the middle of the trail and then hit it with dirt and leaves nearby to camouflage it and says that uh, his intent was not to hurt anybody riding a bike but knew that it was definitely a possibility yeah but, yeah you put goddamn nails what through if they didn't hit it and fell before that and then landed on that strip what if i'm just walking down the doggone trail and then i step on your screws right. that's in the middle of the woods dude like you know what i mean nobody's what's your problem what's your beef god it's the woods bro. you should just go to the appalachian trail and attack people like all other, other nutty wood people do right you go right ahead you know these are my woods what the hell man 
That is messed up. Probably one of the most Gen Z headlines I've read. A soldier in the new Space Force has been demoted. Already? Already. He was demoted after it was discovered that he had actually skipped training to go buy a PS5. Is anyone going to take this branch of the military series? Like, if that's the thing. We'll see, man. I mean, like, look, Space Force, is, it's still warm. You know, we just pulled it out of the oven. And sure. it's like, wait a minute. This is the guy that you've selected. I would assume it's a pretty narrow we selection We also learned process. that aliens are real, man. So we need a Space Force. I'm looking forward to the Space Force Academy to see how their football team is. Oh, yeah. Ooh. You think they're still going to run the triple option? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. It's the only thing they can. <laughs> Down in Florida, a man was rushed to the hospital after a bad encounter in the water. He was out swimming off of one of the beaches when he got bitten by a shark. He managed to get himself back to shore where he was found bleeding profusely from his hand and arm, and a witness called 911 and got him to the hospital. Called it a shark attack. And we had this conversation earlier, Mr. Hill, that if you walk away with a bite that is bleeding profusely from your hand and arm, mm-hmm. can you really call that a shark attack? No, it's a shark bit you. Over right. a If hundred... a shark attacks you, you did not get out of the water. Right. Over 150 years of documented shark attacks. Mm-hmm. Now, there have been individual ones before that. Sure. But of documenting the best they could. This has been a year that is like triple times the normal year of attacks. Because it's 2020. I'm telling you, it's even in the war. The tornado's about to start, man. Even in Australia, more people dying. More people just getting bitten. It's insane. Like, if you look at the numbers, you're like, what the hell's going on? I mean, it's it's significant. Or word is getting out that humans are tasty. It could be that too. Word of mouth. Telling you, man, that Mayan calendar, the guy was dyslexic. It wasn't 2012, it was 2021. It's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Stay positive. Stay positive. A woman in Florida has been arrested for fighting her sister uh, armed with a handful of Christmas spirit. The woman was having an argument with her boyfriend and her sister attempted to defuse the situation. The plan went horribly wrong and resulted in the irate woman shoving her sister, grabbing a Christmas decoration, a beaded tree-shaped decoration, and hitting her in the torso. Police were called shortly after the woman was arrested. Ho, ho, ho. When you are grabbing tools in a fight, take a breath. Yeah, at that moment, if you're not fighting for your life, go like, right. I might be overreacting. Although I'm not above strangling someone with the garland. Okay, I'll give you <laughs> I'm that. I'm having a nutcracker. But if you are oh. in a verbal altercation, like, eh, not even hitting, but then when you, when you physically grab something that you are then going to bludgeon someone with, you're done. Unless there's comedic value like an elf on the shelf. Yeah. I threw chicken at my brother <laughs> and rice in the street. Going with a food fight, Ted. Yeah, I had it near. I hit my brother with some Cheerios. Yeah. Rage doesn't when? really allow you time to think about stuff, That's Mike. That's fair, it's Ted. It's a problem with rage. That's why I'm yeah. trying to set this in subliminally. I'm saying it calmly to where it goes right in the back of everybody's brain to where when they're grabbing that remote, that Christmas decoration that they're about to bludgeon someone with, they think back to my voice saying... This has gone too far. Actually, your voice will make me beat them more. Okay, that's Really fair. great. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Oh, no. Don't grab another thing. Over in Indonesia, an employer at a real-life Jurassic Park ended up like those in the movie. The employee ended up having to be rushed off to the island to a hospital after being attacked by one of their Komodo dragons, saying that the animal tore several parts of his body. Like his arm off. Right. Because it's a Komodo dragon. Exactly. Yeah. I believe we had this conversation earlier. Komodo dragons are... Dinosaurs, and they, they are, are terrifyingly also not so. Necessarily indigenous to this island, they brought them there for this Jurassic Park thing. Right, right. You, yeah, they're only on like two islands. You don't want to mess with these things. And they're a massive predator. They're, they're going to take dinosaur. over what they do. Right. And they're, not only that, but the way that they the way that they kill you is there's so much poison and venom in their mouth. Oh yeah, they don't even venom. You it's get just infected like, like it eats eat you from the inside, and they just keep following you until you drop. Right, exactly. Then they'll eat you. They're just waiting for you. Right. They save up all their energy for that first strike, and then they'll just slowly walk behind they you. Don't have to, anything else to do after that? That's right. And they are incredibly fast. They are incre- they're lightning fast. Yeah, lethal. And that is it for your headlines. With that. My talk is up. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow, and it will be our end of the year spectacular. If we did anything good this year, we'll play it back for you. We don't know. So it shouldn't be long. But in the meantime, we be all up out this bitch. Until next time, please, do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production. 
This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.